Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and in this video we are talking about how to deploy a React application in the production. Now deploying a React application or any other application which is relatedly similar to React, probably you can say React, any Node application or a Django application or an Angular application. Deploying of these modern application is a little bit different from our classic application that we used to build in let's just say PHP. In the case of PHP, you choose a host, for example, GoDaddy, Hostgator, Bluehost, or any other, whatever you are choosing. You just copy your files, you just upload them onto your cPanel, and that's it, voila, everything is done. But in the case of React application or similar such modern web applications, it's not like just copying and pasting all these files. They require a little bit more assets and resources to actually deploy these applications because they are using a lot of node in them and probably similar such services. So in this video, we're gonna see how we can put a React application in the production and I'll show you some of the things which are absolutely important to know. First and foremost, choosing the hosting provider is actually a little bit different from your regular applications. You cannot put these application as of now on GoDaddy or Bluehost or anything like that. Surely in the future, they might come up with a solution for hosting node-based application. But as of now, our hosting choices are a little bit different. You can choose something between AWS, DigitalOcean, maybe Netlify, maybe Heroku, whatever you are like to choose, you can just go for that. Now don't worry, I'll tell you a one simple choice for this video so that you can follow along in this video and can put a really dummy application onto the production along with me. Now there are two ways of deploying a React application. As I said, other similar application, I'll just call them as a React application in this case. So there are two ways of uploading these uh, applications onto the server. One way is when you're working just as a single person, it is your first project or you're just playing around with the project and you just want to see how this uploading process actually works, how this is being pushed to the production. Now that's case number one, it's actually very simple to do, but the case number two is actually a little bit difficult. In the case number two is when we are assuming that when you're working with a team or a group of teams and there are more people above you, seniors, who want to take a look onto your code, what you have built up, how the features are working, there are more testers. So in a group environment, moreover like a company, then how these productions are gonna happen. Now, if you're thinking that you'll be the person who is just gonna walk in into the company on the day one, you'll write some code and you'll push that onto the production, I would say that's cute, but that's not how actually things work. Things go to a variety of different production servers. These are test production servers, not the actual live production servers. And we're gonna see that how that also works. Now, in order to deploy these applications, we need to create a few accounts on a couple of services. And don't worry, all of these services are absolutely free to use, at least to certain scale and to certain open source project. So you, have, you will have no problem in following along. And this reminds me to the sponsor of this video, BuddyWorks. We're gonna take advantage of the BuddyWorks free open source approach, and we're gonna uh, learn how to use them as well. But I would like to thank especially to the Buddy Works for helping me in producing such kind of videos where I can uh, walk you through with variety of scenarios and especially the scenarios which are used by multiple company uh, at a production level. So thank you so much Buddy Works. I'll tell you more about them uh, as we move forward and as we take advantage of their services. Now let's go forward onto my computer and let's create a quickly a React application and deploy that onto the production. Now let's go ahead and create a simple React application and put it to the production. Before creating so, we're gonna need a few accounts. So let's go ahead and talk about them. So these are the few resources that I highly recommend you to read or whatever you like to do. So first is React uh, Docs. Of course, these are important ones. So if you'll just walk into the documentation and click on the Create New React App, that's how we create a React app. Now, I'm assuming that whatever the complex application you want to create, you can just go ahead and create that. Install as many dependencies or routing information that you want to have. Just go ahead and create that. We will not be doing that. We will be just uh, creating a simple React application. We'll change a text there and that's all what we are gonna do to keep this uh, video followable by almost everyone. Then of course, we are gonna need an account on GitHub because we are gonna take a route of continuous production or continuous editing production kind of a thing. The approach is really simple. As soon as you create a production, uh, you make a change in something, you're gonna push that onto GitHub. And from the GitHub, we are gonna pull that repository onto the Netlify. And from the Netlify, we're gonna host our application. It's gonna be a really simple process. So of course, you're gonna need an account on github.com. Don't worry, I'll show you how to do that. Uh, not 
creating the account, but how to push your application onto the GitHub. I'm gonna also walk you through how to push it onto the Netlify. And this is the way if you are working on a very simple application, kind of a portfolio website or something, then you can push it directly this way. But things actually get a little bit more interesting when things are working in a team or in a company level environment. And in that case, we are gonna use the BuddyWorks uh, pipelining system. Now, when an application is being created, it's not like it's being pushed directly onto the production. It first goes variety of the test cases as well as test servers so that we can test the application is working fine. Even seniors in that application or the company can take a look at how the code is behaving and do we need more adjustment to be done. And I need you to create account on all these websites, GitHub and Netlify, as well as on the BuddyWorks. The BuddyWorks have their pricing option pretty amazing for the open source project or anything like that portfolio or something, you can just use them absolutely for free. There is no charge in them. In case you want to use their cloud services, then they have uh, these pricing options. You can be the judge, do you like them or not? But I would say I'm a big fan of their pipelining feature and especially their documentation. Of course, they are the sponsor of this video. But again, these are such open things that you can just openly have a look on that. And they support the deployments on almost everything that you are gonna need from AWS to DigitalOcean to the Git clouds, the Google clouds, Heroku, Netlify, Rackspace. So pretty much anything and everything that you're gonna need, they support the pipelining system in that. I'll, tol I'll talk about more on the pipelining system as we just take advantage of their systems later on. As of now, we are just using the Netlify, so it's a good idea to take a look on that. And as you can see here, they can execute the installation, deploy to Netlify and send message to the Slack channel. Whenever we are, we are pushing our application onto uh, the test servers, we of course want to notify the entire team. So that's why the support of the Slack channel is absolutely amazing. We'll come back on to the later on that. So I expect that you're gonna now pause the video and create your account on all of these three. So GitHub, uh, Netlify and the BuddyWorks. So go ahead and create an account on all of that. You can pause the video now. Assuming that some of you did pause the video there. Now we are gonna uh, just use these three uh, commands to create a simple React application. Also, I expect that everybody is having some or the other version of Node installed in your system. That's like very much basic. I think everybody is having it. Now fire up your terminal uh, wherever you are having it. So I'm gonna just go on to my desktop. So let's go on to the desktop. Oops. Okay. Now, I expect if you're on a Windows, you're using Git Bash because the default terminal of Windows is not really great. So go ahead and install the Git Bash. It's a free software-ish thing which is available. So go ahead and install that. Now let's use uh, take advantage of this documentation. So it says npx create React app my app. So we're gonna just copy that and let's go ahead and paste that. Now, in some of these cases, uh, chances are high that npx is not gonna work in your system. So just go ahead and use npm, no problem in that. Create React app is an application which needs to be installed on your system. If it is not, uh, just type the command. Uh, what you have to do is, in case you are on a Linux or Mac, uh, you have to just say sudo npm hyphen g install uh, create React app. It's gonna install the React as a global. If you're on the Windows, just make sure you open it on as an administrator and Windows user, you don't need to type the sudo. After typing the sudo, in the case of Linux and Mac, it's gonna ask you to enter your password. Once this application, create React app is installed in your system. I think that's too much basic. I think you're already having a React application. Uh, let's just call this as uh, React test one. So this is the name of my application. So we're gonna just hit the enter and it's gonna say, hey, uh, it's having some of the issues. Uh, let me just hit Control L and we need to have NPX only. So it looks like NPM is not. NPX is the only thing I think in the recent version of the node NPX is already there. So I think NPM is not available now. Okay, so let's go ahead and fast forward this process of creating the application. Uh, I'll just fast forward it. So now that React application is completely ready to run it, uh, I would like to bring your attention to some of these uh, commands that are given directly defaultly by the React. One is npm start, of course, to start it. Then we have npm run build. 
This bundles the application into static files which are ready for production. You can actually pack all of these application into classic JavaScript and upload that online server, but we are gonna use the little bit modern approach on that. Okay, so there are all the things which all we need. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just enter this folder. I'm gonna open up uh, my code editor up here. So code space dot means open up my code editor which happened to be Visual Studio Code in the current directory. And that's all what we are having. So first and foremost, I would love to see what is my React application and make sure you also check this git ignore and make sure there is slash node modules is there. <laughs> this is absolutely necessary. Otherwise you'll be pushing up too many things onto this. So uh, we are not gonna be touching much of the things. Uh, let's go into app.js. And uh, what I want you to do is remove this entire a tag up here. Just make sure you delete entirely. And inside the p tag, all I want you to do is just say uh, my awesome React app at learn code online. Okay, so that's all what we are gonna do. No groundbreaking changes. That's all what we want to do. Now, as you can see in the documentation also, you can run the command npm start to start this application. Let's hit control and tilde to bring in the default terminal of the VS code. And we're gonna run that command. So npm, or we can just say npm start, I guess. So let's wait for a couple of seconds. And there we go, our application is ready. It's hosted on, or it's serving us at localhost 3000. Come on, you can do it a little bit faster. There we go, my awesome React application at Learn Code Online. Looks pretty great. Now we need to put this application into the build mode. Right now it is it is in development mode, so we are gonna put that into the build mode. So how to find out that command? Just go into the package.json and you can see we have lots of script. The one is npm start, which React script starts. And we have this npm uh, build as well. So we can run this application and then we're gonna see a few interesting things. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna hit control C to kill this. And I'm gonna say npm build. Okay, let's go ahead and hit that. Okay, npm run build. There we go, now it's running the build and it's gonna give you a couple of options that I want you to see very closely. Okay, come on. And there we go. Now, what it's asking me is saying serve s build. So this will build a folder in the React application to be deployed on a static server. Now, the serve is not gonna be installed by default on your system. So again, we have to do the same thing. For Linux and Mac, you have to write sudo npm install hyphen g and serve. For the Windows user, you don't need to run sudo, just make sure your terminal is opened up as an administrator and you have to simply say npm install hyphen g serve. Assuming that serve is now installed, then, then we have to do is serve s and build. What it's gonna do, it's gonna create a new folder build in your application and now your application is available at localhost 5000 or your IP 5000. It's also copied on the clipboard directly. So I think that's really fantastic. So I'm gonna just open this up. It's gonna look exactly same, but this is a build ready application. What it has done internally, it has converted all of your ES6 and all those amazing feature into the regular ES5 so that all the static application can be uh, served directly from here. So in the build, we are having all of this static information available up here. But don't worry, we are not gonna be putting up like copying and pasting build folder there. We are gonna use a better version of it. So I'm gonna hit Control C now uh, to kill this up here. Now, I would like to initialize a Git repository here in this entire application so that I can push it onto the GitHub. So phase two is, is now acting up. Consider this one as phase one, creating application. The phase two is uh, making a build version of it, kind of a 1.5, a phase 1.5. Phase two is putting that on the GitHub. So GitHub is pretty simple. All we're gonna do is first initialize the Git. So just say Git init, and we're gonna initialize that. It says it's already available, Git is already here. So we're gonna say Git add, and dot means I want to add all the files into the Git. There we go, it's done. And then I'm gonna simply say, uh, git commit and then we're gonna put a message up here that says uh, initial commit. 
there we go it's all done and i can also say uh, git push in case you wish to uh, but right now we need to have a remote you can see that it says git remote add url what what's this going on I cannot actually push it. I want to push it onto a remote server, but I don't have any remote server right now. So who's gonna come to save our day? To save our day, we're gonna have a GitHub repository. So make sure you go to github.com slash new. It will allow us to have a new repository. So I'm gonna simply say it's gonna be uh, react test one. So any random name that you can come up with. Uh, just a test app for YouTube stuff, you know just like that. I'm going to keep this private because I really don't want anybody to see these kinds of test testing application to go on my GitHub repository, although this is not really my personal one. This is like more over a public stuff. So I'm going to keep it private and I'm going to just create a repository there. Okay. And there we go. Looks awesome. And now uh, it gives you a couple of options. Uh, we can choose this last one up here uh, to just add it. What we're going to do is we can just simply go ahead and push this up here. So we're gonna simply copy this. You can just click on this and it's gonna copy all the commands. Go up onto your terminal and just paste this stuff here. And it's gonna push all of your Git repository files and everything which needs to be pushed onto the Git server. It's not gonna push this node module, so make sure you're aware of that. Once you go up here, you can hit a reload there and all of your application is now available along with the readme file and all those stuffs. Okay, so phase two is over. Our application is now on React and whatever you're gonna do, all you have to do is git push and that's it. It's gonna push all of your work onto the git repository. That's great so far. Now let's go on to the Netlify and now we are gonna create a Netlify uh, website to deploy it on to like that, okay? So I'm gonna just go on to this and I'm gonna create, click on this new site from Git. Once you click on that, it will give you a variety of options, how you want to integrate Netlify with. Some people use other services other than GitHub, so it's gonna allow you that option as well. So I'm gonna click on new from Git. As you can see, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, so this is allowed. I'm gonna click on GitHub and now a pop-up actually comes up to authorize. Mine is already authorized, so no need to worry about that. It gives you a lot of options. I'm gonna choose for React test one, and I'm gonna hit enter. Hopefully it's gonna find it. There we go, this is our application. I'm gonna select this one up here. And interestingly, notice it says uh, which branch you want to load. In case you know how to work with the branch, that's amazing option. It also runs this npm run build and build all of this and show advance and deploy site. So publish directory is built where everything is gonna build up. We're gonna click on deploy site. Now it's gonna pull up all of your files from the GitHub and will deploy up here. And as you can see, site deploy in progress. Within a few minutes, uh, right now it says enqueued, but it doesn't really take much of the time, even in the free plans, so generous of them. Uh, then you're gonna see a URL just right here, which will help you to deploy your application, or we can see the application directly here. This is a setup where you are just one man person, you want to test how the build process or the production process works. But this is not a process which is being followed up into the company. So for that, we have to take a couple of more steps and we have to move on to this buddy works. Uh, we're gonna take that in a second. First and foremost, let me wait for a few seconds so that our site deployment is actually in the process. You can see even this cog wheel are rotating. Ah, oh, that's done, quickly. I thought we need to just wait for a few seconds. I'm gonna open it up in a new tab. And there we go, my awesome React application. It's now on some domain, uh, not really amazing. Uh, if you have your own domain, you can link that up in the domain setting. Uh, probably that I'll do in some other videos if you'll comment down in the below section. Now let's see how this application is actually pushed uh, when we are working in a company environment, which is very important for you to understand and learn because obviously you'll be working in a company where a lot of things are happening in a different way, what you have learned in some other courses or even my courses. Okay, so what we need to do, I highly recommend to read their documentation, pretty much very amazing documentation. I'm highly impressed with that. Now click on this sign in, again, no charges, no credit card, no debit card, you can use their free services, really nice. And it says projects, activity and people. So you can add up your all teammates and stuff like that, I'll talk in uh, about that in a minute. First and foremost, there are no projects in this workspace, so we would like to create one, of course. So let's go ahead and click on create new project. 
and it says uh, you can just push your project directly from GitHub, but their options are pretty amazing. You can even create a GitHub repository directly with Buddy Hosting, which I like, and you have your private Git servers. Now, not all the companies use services like GitHub or Bitbucket because sometimes they are cautious about their code being leaked even by the companies like very responsible companies like GitHub. So they use their own private GitHub servers. So once you click on that, you're gonna notice that you can add up your project name, remote repository, SSH key and all of that. Great options, by the way. Now, as of now, we're gonna use the GitHub and we're gonna search for our application, which is React, React Test 1, there we go. And I'm gonna click on that. And now it's gonna synchronize with that. And this is the pipeline. I'm a big fan of their pipeline feature. What is this pipeline? It allows us to have multiple of interactions before the things goes, even the test production. Let me show you. We're gonna click on this add pipeline. And now it says what you would like to name this uh, pipeline. So I'm gonna call this pipeline as uh, uh, simply my first pipe, you can name it a little bit better. I would like this pipeline to execute on the push. And that's all I want to do. And I'm going to click on add new pipeline. Okay, now we can add actions to this pipeline. These actions are something which makes this absolutely amazing. And you can see there are so many options of transferring to the DevOps to run the commands for Angular, Gatsby, whatever you like to have. Uh, there are some tools and task runner for Gradle, Grunt, all of them. This is very, very intense. And I would say I'm really happy with that. Okay, as of now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take and select an action of Node.js. Now here you can see, uh, we have a couple of options, npm install and npm test. As I told you, since this git ignore is, uh, where is my git ignore? if I can find that. In this git ignore, there is a name that says node module. So what it's saying, I don't want you to upload node modules because that's a big directory. And this directory can be recreated because of this package.json file. That's why this folder is never uploaded on GitHub. You want to check it? See, there is no node modules, okay? So in order to recreate that folder, we run this command of npm install and we can just work on that. As of now, I'm not gonna run any test because my application is not having any test cases. If I have, I can run all of those commands as I said, and with a one click of button, every time all those tests are gonna be running through. So we're gonna click on add this action. By the way, there are many other op uh, options of environment and services and variables and whatnot. I'm right now interested in, in only npm install. Click on this add action and there we go. So first execution of this is all done. We can just click on the add and we can add more of these actions. If you just click on that, uh, you can see that more actions can be done up here. I don't want to do it right now. I just want to have it. Okay, so this is my first pipeline and I'm gonna just uh, say that's all, all I want to do and I'm gonna click up here. Okay, so this is my first pipeline that we are having and that's all working. Now let's click on this run pipeline and I'm gonna click on run now. What's going to happen now, amazingly, it's almost like a Docker approach. Not almost, it is a Docker approach. It's gonna create a, sap, a separate sandbox kind of environment for you. We'll put all of your application and we'll run here. So all of the tests that you have mentioned before going into the production is now going to go up here. It is currently installing a node environment for you onto a system and there we go, it's like ridiculously fast. So this is all what we are having. So this is all what we are doing and let's click on manage actions, uh, pipelines. There we go. So this is my first pipeline and it's awaiting for the push right now. As soon as I click on run now and it's gonna push again whatever the updates that I have made up here. What's amazing about this is you can add as many pipelines as you wish to have. Let me show you one more thing. I'm gonna click on add new pipeline and once all those test cases are run, then I want to push it on to some test Netlify server. Let's assume that. We're gonna click on on push again, and this is gonna be Netlify uh, test uh, ENV, test environment, whatever you like to name it. I'm gonna click on, I want to add this pipeline. Yes, I want to have it on push, not on the manual or not on recurrently. By the way, these are great options. You can set up a new time whenever you want to have it. We're gonna set it on push. 
click on add new pipeline and I want you to do what this time is I want you to have an action of Netlify. Okay, I can click on Netlify and it's using the Netlify deploy option. You can set all these actions again and I wanna add this action here. And that's all what we have to do. Now click on run pipeline and run now. There we go, so it's in progress. Now things are changed, a little bit changed. Let me walk you through once this is finished. These are like ridiculously fast, so it's gonna not take much of the time. So let me show you what is happening now. Now, let's see, uh, let's click on the pipelines. Now we have two pipelines, so we don't have to do anything. As soon as we are gonna do a push onto the GitHub, the first it's gonna do is run all of your tests that you have made onto a separate environment, not in your production environment, and it's almost like a Docker or a container is being created for you for running all of those tests. And then you can have a production uh, being fetched through this pipeline. So this is super amazing to be done up here. All you have to do is come up here onto the push or you can set it like recurrently as well, however you like to go. And now the application is not directly being fetched to the user, which is always a bad idea. You always want to test the things first and you can test it through these pipelines. These pipelines are used in almost all the companies in one way or the other through one uh, service provider or by the other service provider. But these are the things which actually happens in a real world company. And you're gonna see them a lot when you will take a job as a React developer or not a Node developer. There are other options as well. You can check them out about export, import, commit commands and whatnot. I highly recommend you to read their documentation and their uh, free service is actually pretty generous, so I highly recommend you to test out these. Mine is having just one as of now. Okay, so that's it. And all you have to do now is whenever you make some changes in your application, make, maybe you just want to say my awesome React application at learncodeonline.in. Uh, maybe you want to have it like that. You just save it. And all you have to do is now just say git push. And there we go. Everything is up to date. Oh, we didn't add it. So we need to add git add and we have to say git commit a link added. All the link was not added. And now we can just simply say git push. Now everything is being pushed onto the server. But what you're gonna notice now that since you have added a pipeline there, uh, it's not gonna be automatically being deployed onto your application. Usually, if you're working as a one-man army, you haven't linked these pipelines, then it will automatically being fetched by the Netlify and start processing and everything will update live on to the website. But that's a wrong idea if you are working in a team environment and your application is being used by thousands of people. In this case, now what's going to happen, you have to just push it. I want to run it right now. Please run this one. So it's gonna fetch all these applications from the GitHub into this test environment. And once all the tests are being passed down, it's gonna notify up here that, hey, everything is working fine. No code is being blasted as you were doing it. It's working now. And now we can run it onto the push. And now this will fetch it to Netlify to just run it. And I think it has already done it. Yeah, please go ahead and run this. Now it's fetching it to Netlify servers. Once we are absolutely sure that this needs to be fetched, we are not fetching anything and everything directly up here. And once this is being done, then uh, we're gonna see it up here. Uh, let's quickly hit a reload. And there we go, we have got another one being published. And we can now come up here. Where is my React application? Click on that. And there we go, we can see React code, uh, learn code online dot in now. So there we go, again, a big shout out to our sponsor of this video one more time, uh, BuddyWorks. Uh, I love their services and I'm pretty sure you're gonna enjoy them as well. They are used in the companies quite a lot in the real world production, so big shout out to them. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you want more such videos about what happens in the real world companies or how to do things into a production stage, please let me know in the comment section below. I would love to create more such videos. That's it for this one. Let's catch up in the next one.